Hey up, it's Steve from the old Yorkshire Geek, and as you can see behind me, well not behind me, but uh, where are we? That way a bit. It's uh, episode one of Andor. Now it's going to be full spoilers, by the way. The three episodes dropped at once, but I'm going to do the three separate reviews for each one, because it's easier that way. Um, so let's just get on with it. Let's hit the intro. <laughs> I'm back. So, season one, episode one of Andor. I don't think they have titles. It just says episode one on the uh, the Disney Plus uh, web page. Uh, not web page. Page. You know, I don't watch it on the internet. I watch it through through my Xbox. Whatever. Right. So <laughs> let's get on with it, shall we? Before we start, I should say I wasn't immensely impressed with it. I did enjoy it. Did it feel like Star Wars? I'm not exactly sure. It kind of did, but didn't at the same time. But I did enjoy it, so I just thought I'd get that out of the way first. But I didn't think it was amazing. But anyway, right, so we'll crack on. So we'll get it up. There we go. So a blank screen, because that's all that's happening. Hang on, where are we? There we go. Oh, hang on, I've got to uh, just mute the bugger. Right, obviously I'm not going to play it, we're just going to go through it. So anyway, the uh, the usual logos, and there we go. This title takes forever to come on. Beginning of each episode, you think, come on, just get on with it, just show Andor, and it, it slowly emerges. That's going to be annoying. <laughs> and the door says skip, you know, skip. The skip. You can skip the recaps and skip the original titles, you know, that show the... The heads. Uh, see if we can show it here. See, see, we'll come back a bit, and it's, that's that's part of the title. You can skip that bit, but you can't skip this. Look how long it goes on for. Uh, anyway, right, so we're off. Right, so there's this chap here. This is obviously Cassie and Ando. He's walking along a bridge, a well lit bridge. Uh, it tells us where we are. Look, uh, can you read that? Yep, uh, Molana One Priox Morgana Corporate Zone. Now, it's all about the corporations, really, in this these first three episodes. It's all about the corporations. The Empire's mentioned, but we don't actually see, you know, any Imperial officers. We don't see any stormtroopers or anything like that. Um, we get some flashbacks, presumably through the Clone Wars, or of the Clone Wars era, but we don't see any clone troopers either. So, anyway, so that's... I just thought I'd... Throw that out there. So anyway, we're on Marlana One, so a planet I've never heard of. I've never heard of any of the planets in this uh, this series. So let's just move on. So anyway, so he's, he's going. He's, he's heading to um, well, what is it termed a brothel? By the way, there's some spicy language in this uh, in this series uh, that you're not really accustomed to in Star Wars. They use you know. The B word and the S word. So, so there you go. So it's Star Wars for grown ups, that's what it is, which is what I'd call Rogue One a bit. You know, that was a bit like Star Wars for grown ups, wasn't it? So there he is, there's Cassian Andor, played by Diego Luna. Sneaking about, a lot of sneaking about. Uh, there's these aliens in things. I, I, I'm guessing this is supposed to be like, you know, like the red light district in Amsterdam. Uh, where you see the you know the girls in the windows, um, I'm guessing this is supposed to be a little bit like that. <laughs> I could be wrong, but that's uh, that's the impression I got. Anyway, heads in here. Right, so that's it. Stuff happens. It's, it's I must admit it is quite drawn out, um, and it's quite a, a slow burn. There is action in it. Stuff does happen, but it's quite a slow burn. Uh, right, so he gets a drink at the bar. Uh, I thought he had a gun then, but it's him holding his drink. <laughs> uh, and this um, hostess sidles up to him. Uh, notice these chaps on the other side of the bar. They become important soon. Uh, so, you know, so and they are, they want her, but she says she's busy with this client and somebody else will attend to them. But they're getting a bit noisy. And he suggests that she goes over to them. But she says, oh, no, they're just... They're just security. They're just corporate security. You know, they think they're policemen, but they're not. And they just get loud. 
Uh, anyway, it turns out he's asking. He starts asking a question, so she gets a bit suspicious. Uh, thinks you know it might be like an imperial agent or something, or a cop or whatever. Uh, but it end, it, in the end, he starts asking about you know a girl uh, from uh, oh I forgot the name of it now. Is it Kalani? Oh that oh that T. See I've forgotten already. I've just watched finished watching it like you know half an hour ago. <laughs> I forgot everything. I should take notes, shouldn't I? But I don't. Um, so she's looking out a, a girl from Kalani, and she says, "Well, we've got you know." So she goes away and then comes back, and um, she says, "You know, we've no girls from Kalani, uh, but we've got a girl from somewhere else. She's got the same big eyes." And then it says, "Not interested." And then she says, "You know, who are you looking for? You know, a lover, whatever." He says, "No, he's looking for his sister." Uh, and then she says, uh, "Well, we we did have a girl that came through here, but she's gone now." And he says, "What was her name?" If she's your sister, don't you know a bloody name? <laughs> she says, "Nobody uses the real names," so that doesn't help. Uh, so that's that, really. So, anyways, he has a bit of a a talking with these men, and it's obviously the you know something's going to happen in a bit. Uh, this is her telling him about um, the girl that's come and gone. Um, so he leaves. See, it's raining. Heading down the dark alley, and then he hears this. Uh, th these security guards behind him telling him to stop. Um, so he does, and they've got a gun on him. And he says he's got three hundred credits in his coat. Um, I've gone too far now, haven't I? So he's got 300 credits in his coat. See, it's here. Oh, I'm rubbish at this. Uh, and as this chap goes into uh, to collect it, Cassian throws his head back, head butts him, he goes down and he tackles the other chap, gets his gun off him. Uh, you see, action, bit of fighting, bit of fisticuffs. Uh, but it turns out the fellow he headbutted has killed him. He must have rammed his nose or something into his brain. There's no blood or anything, but he's just dead. So, got this other chap's begging for his life, and he says, you know, nothing's happened. Um, you know, I'll say he fell, and it was a fight, and it was an accident. You know, we can say all that. But uh, Cassian's having none of this, and he just shoots him. He's telling him, look, he's killed him, he's killed his friend, his, his partner or whatever. Comrade, that's what he's, he's, I suppose. And uh, so here he is pleading for his life. But uh, have we gone too far? But Cassian, uh, man, just shoots him. Cold blooded murder. Uh, and this is before he joins the Rebel Alliance, by the way. Um, I don't actually know what he does. <laughs> It doesn't really say. I suspect he's supposed to be working in this, this scrap yard, this junker's yard, what they call a breaker's yard. Uh, I suspect he's supposed to be working there, but he never seems to go there, apart from to talk to his friend. Uh, the rest of the time, he's just seen sneaking about, doing dodgy deals. So I think he's like an Aladdin-type character, a, a, you know, a street rat. Uh, so anyway, so after that, uh, he gets in his ship, heads back to where he's from, which is a planet called, I think it's called Ferrix. I'm probably remembering that wrong as well. <laughs> um, anyway, so we cut to this other planet, and uh, these weird alien dogs appear. And there's a, a droid trundling along, as we'll see in a moment. There we go. This is uh, B2 Emo. Yeah. Ha ha. He's actually quite an endearing droid. Um, He's quite old, it seems. Uh, he's a bit bashed up, look, and he stutters. You know, he's obviously got some malfunction in his, his vocal capacity, so he stutters and gives it all, you know, hello, Kirk, Kirk Cassian, and all that. He's got a voice like that. And he's quite endearing. Uh, but I don't know why they called him emo, because, you know, whatever. Anyway, these dogs run past him. Another one, and then <laughs> this last dog. Oh, see, I've gone too far. This last dog pees on him. There we go. 
starts peeing on it. Let's see if I can. Uh, here we go. This last dog here, look, just cocks his leg. There we go. Starts peeing on him. So B2 zaps him. A bit like R2 in, you know, Return of the Jedi with the Ewoks. Gives, him a little, gives the dog a little zap and it runs off. So he heads back on his way. And he is out in this, uh, this is the, uh, you know, the breaker's yard. Well, I think it is. Uh, but um, Cassian's not doing what he's supposed to do. He's working on doing something with his ship. And this, I think this is a ship that we see later on. But we'll uh, in another episode. But we'll we'll get to that. Uh, B two goes inside. Oh, there we have a flashback now for some weird reason. Right, what we're seeing now here. This is the planet. I forgot what they call it. <laughs> Kel Kelly oh, Kellyni Kelly. I don't know. I'll I'll write. I'll put it in. No, but I can't. Can I? You know what? I'm gonna have to look it up, aren't I? Bear with me. And we'll look it up. Did it did did it did Right. See if it tells us in this. Let's see if it tells us in this. I bet it don't. Did it did did it de premise right. Did did it did it did it don't say because it's stupid. Don't say where it's from. Right, here we go, right. Wikipedia to the rescue. Now then, does it say here? Uh, did, did, did it, did he? It ain't going to say, is it? It ain't going to say. It says here's Homeworld's Fest and Ferrix. So it's on Ferrix. Oh, it's Canary. Not Kalini, Canary. So, I got there in the end. <laughs> Uh, was born 26 BBY and died, obviously, 0 BBY. But there's no year 0, is there? There shouldn't be anywhere. There's no year 0 in our calendar, so why is there a 0 BBY on Scarif? Uh, but anyway, that that's uh, spoilers for Rogue One. Uh, right, so they're on Ferrix. It's from Canary. Right, where were we? Anyway, so this is on Canary, and we see he's living... It's like they're basically like a tribe, and, you know, they're unsophisticated. They've no technology other than, like, blow darts and things like that. They're basically they're depicting them as, like, Native Americans. Is that the term that you can use these days? I don't know. I can't keep up, you know. First people, indigenous, whatever. They, they, these are the sort of people that they are. They're speaking their own language. It's not uh, giving us subtitles or anything. Um... So the hunter-gatherers, that's what they are. So anyway, so we're seeing that. And we see his, his sister's with him. So I presume that's who he's looking for at the beginning. We don't know what happens to her. She's never mentioned again in these first three episodes. But anyway, right, so we go through that. Right, we're back with... Uh, they do quite a few of these flashbacks, by the way, and they just bang, they just cut into them. That's it, no. No woman and Aaron. Right, we're back with Cassie in here now. He's nursing um, after this fight. He's got bruised knuckles. Uh, he's nursing them. Um, uh, B2's brought him like a, a, I don't know, a back to patch or something. Um, so he puts that on his hand. Uh, da, 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 so that's what happens there. He's, he's talking to him, saying, you know, he wants him to lie for him, tell him that, you know, he didn't see him and stuff like that. He's asking a few people to lie for him here, by the way. He goes and asks his friend at the scrapyard. This is what's going to happen here. He's going to ask him to lie for him and tell him that he were with him all night and they got drunk and stuff like that. And they had a good night out. So his friend says, yeah, whatever. So that happens there. Then we cut to the... Uh, these are the, the security, the corporate security. This is a, an old an old chap. The head of security. This is a... Ambitious young officer, uh, telling him about you know the murder on Mar. I presume this is back on Marlana, Marlana one or whatever it was called. Um, but uh, the old chap, him, him there, he just wants to brush it under the carpet. Say, oh, it was an accident. You know, we don't need this this nonsense. The fellas that were killed, you know, were, were trouble causers anyway, and nobody'll miss them. So, 
that's what he says, he's off for a meeting. And when he gets back, he wants an accident, wants to see an accident report on his desk. But this young officer, um, I presume he's got a name, but I can't actually, I don't actually know if it mentions it. But anyway, <laughs> um, he wants nothing to do with that. He's, he's, he's going to solve the crime without his knowledge. We don't see him again, by the way. So, it, you know, basically this, this young chap takes over the investigation. So he's looking for Cassian now. Right, Cassian, he goes and meets with, this is Bix, I do believe. You know what? I should have the bloody cast list up, shouldn't I? <laughs> but I haven't. Because I'm unprepared, as per usual. I'm unprepared. Right, that's Bix, played, played by the, the amazingly gorgeous uh, Adria Iona. Um, so thanks, uh, IMDB. <laughs> um, hang on, I'm just getting the cast list up so I can uh, check back at it uh, when needed. Right, there we go. Yeah, uh, Adria Iona, and I must admit, she's amazingly gorgeous. Um, but she's working away here. She works in some sort of, I don't know, to be honest. Um, she, it's like a, a, a junk shop. Um, you know, a bit like um, a bit like Waters, and I'm not exactly sh sure entirely who's in charge. She seems to be, or sometimes it's other people seem to be, but they're all doing junky things. Uh, she's got a bit of a sideline of where she um, she gets parts and sells them on, you know, without the uh, the bosses knowing about it. You know, she's got contacts that can uh, get things off world. So Cassian goes to a he he want he needs to get off world basically. He needs her to con contact her contact because uh, he needs to get off world world quickly. She says, "Well, it'll be next week." He says, "No, you need to. Uh, it needs to be you know sooner than that." So basically, she says, "Yeah, all right, then I'll do that then." Um, by the way, they're not a couple. Uh, she's got a boyfriend called Tim, who's an asshole, and comes to a sticky end. But we'll see that later. Um, but obviously Tim's jealous of Cassie and he thinks something's going on. Nothing's going on. They're just, uh, I wouldn't even call them friends. They're just associates. Here he is, that's Tim. He comes over asking, you know, they need stuff doing, doing work-related things. So that's that. So she agrees to, con you know, contact her contact. <laughs> uh, right, another flashback. Uh, they're going out on a hunting party. I think that's this bit. Uh, oh no, it ain't because we see a ship coming over. They're getting ready to go on a hunting party. See, they're putting war paint on. Uh, obviously, you know, a girl's in charge, obviously, because it's you know twenty twenty two. Oh, that's that. Right. So we will come back to them in a bit. Right, this is this chap. He's proceeding. He's obviously having thoughts. Uh, some of other officers pass him. And ask him if he's okay, and he says, yeah, because he's just standing in front of this door for a, a minute or two, and I think he's deciding internally what to do, whether to carry on with this uh, investigation. So anyway, he decides to do that. He goes inside, and uh, this is obviously some, some sort of air traffic control centre, and he finds basically Cassian's ship leaving uh, Marlana. Is it Marlana? See, I can't even remember that. Anyway, whatever. Leaving that planet. And he says he wants it tracing. So he says, yeah, that, that means, you know, doing a lot of work, basically. He says, well, get on with it then. Or he'll find somebody else that can do it. So that's that. Uh, oh, this chap here, um, don't ask me his name. He, he says Cassie owes him money, so he got a, a big alien behind him as muscle. There we go. Uh, Cassian says, uh, yep, you know. I can't, I can't give you your deposit back. It's, it's, you know, it's gone to wherever it's supposed to go to, but he wants it back. Uh, but Cassian fobs him off because uh, he's just there for sure. He's not gonna, really going to beat up Cassian, so Cassian sods off, and that's the last we see of them. It's basically just showing that Cassian, I suppose, can handle himself and he can talk himself out of situations. It's a bit like Han Solo, isn't it? Right, so what's going on here now? Uh, this is, uh, oh, that's Tim. Um, Bix is going on some errands, she says. Uh, Tim's watching her through the window. Um, 
he's following her, see where she's going. So they're going through the, the streets of uh, whatever this town's called, on Ferrix. Uh, by the way, it's all, um, I don't know if there's any, you know, the stagecraft, you know, the volume um, work going on. Uh, maybe there's a little bit, I don't know, but it's apparently it's a lot of um, uh, on location and sets and stuff like that. And you can tell it's actually really cinematic and it's really well shot. And it looks nice. Right, so she goes, see I've missed a bit now. She goes into this, uh, like another shop, and she says she needs such and such. Oh, see, I've gone too far, anyway. She needs such and such, there we go. She needs, you know, a whatever, whatever, and he says, it's obviously code. So he says, you know, in the back of the yellow racks. So that's obviously, a, you know, a code that she can, you know, go where she needs to go. So that's the yellow rack. So she ends, she ends up going through, climbs up a ladder, and she's sending a message. It's obviously some sort of communications array. And she's sending a message to... Uh, uh, it turns out to be Stellan Skarsgård. That's who it turns out to be. That's her contact. Uh, Luthien. So that's that. Um, uh, this is the uh, young officer. I've got to look and see what his bloody name is. Um... You know what? I don't know. Is that him? I don't know. Because the, the the pictures that they're showing <laughs> on IMDb they don't look a lot like the um, the headshots. <laughs> are not giving many clues as to who they are in the actual series. So I don't. I still don't know his name. It might tell us at another point. It might have told us in this, but I've missed it. Anyway, I'll just call him the officer. Um. You know, they've got a lead, they've got a lead, so that's basically it. Uh, they've gone, you know, they've, it's gone to FedEx, so they know that. Um, right, back at the uh, the breaker's yard, this is some sort of security guard with his uh, guard dogs. Um, and he tells uh, Cassian, you know, he's not to come in here anymore. Because he's, he's, he goes there, you know, under the pretenses of doing work, but he's not. He's just getting stuff for himself, basically. So the guard tells him, you know, not to come back. Um, so basically, Cassian's losing his um, his um, what's the word? His, his um, resources. People are turning their backs on him and stuff like that. Well, some of them are. Right, another flashback. Right, they're going on this hunting party now, I think, uh, or maybe in a bit. Uh, and then a ship goes over. So they're just about to set off. I, I, I might have missed it, actually. <laughs> yeah, I have. I missed it. <laughs> Earlier on, a ship flew over. It was before they got ready. They saw a ship fly over, and it were, the explosions and stuff going on, it were in flames, and it uh, went down some distance away. And that's what they're going on the hunting party for. And I think, is that it, actually, for that episode? I do believe it is. Yes, it is. So that's the end of episode one. See, not not a lot happened. Uh, just a lot of walking about in Ferrix and Cassian killing somebody. Um, yeah. What can I say? What can I say? Not a great deal happened. Um, I'm glad they showed the first three episodes, because these first three episodes, apart from you know, episode three, uh, which had quite a lot of action in... Um, Episode one and two, not a lot happens, to be honest. It's, it's a very slow burn. So it's a good job they showed the first three episodes. That's probably why they've done it, because there was some action in episode three. They thought, we'd better show some action, keep people with us. But yeah, that's episode one. It was okay. Not exactly action-packed. But I was interested enough to keep watching. The characters are interesting. It's well acted. Um, uh, is it Star Wars? I don't know. They've got droids and things and aliens and blasters. But, you know, is it Star Wars? Yeah, I suppose it is. But we'll keep we'll keep going. I'd give this, for a score, oh, what score shall I give it? Because I wasn't amazed by it, but I didn't hate it. I did like it. But it doesn't deserve a super high score, to be honest. Um, I'd give this a 6 out of 10, so it's like above average. It's an above average score, 6 out of 10. So we'll leave it there. Uh, for episode one. So join me, you know, in another video for episode two. So, 
Until next time, wherever you are in the universe, look after each other, and I'll see thee.